Um, next up, guys, we have Helix, which I'm sure you're all big fans of. That is going to, there you go. um, that is going to return on January 16th at 10 p.m. You know, the first season uh, was outstanding for us both critically and creatively, and we're very excited about the second season, which has a lot of the same mythology and suspense, but an entirely new location. Um, so let me introduce a couple people who have come from the show. First is uh, here at Bogowski. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, they rehearsed it with me right before, and I was like, I knew I'm going to screw it up. It's that Z name that, that threw me off. It's not a Z, you panicked. <laughs> um, and executive producer, Stephen Maeda. I know, you know, it's the Z name, I, it threw me, the lights, everything. So, uh, all right, so uh, Steve, why don't you talk about the new location and what we're doing a, a little bit differently this year? Yeah, um, but one of the things we always talked about doing with the show, if we were fortunate enough to have a second season, was changing up the location, and because the show is so self-contained, um, it happens, it, it really occurs in, in one space for, for all 13 episodes. Obviously, season one, we were in the Arctic, and up at Arctic Biosystems, and it all blew up at the end of the first year, so can't go back. And so uh, we decided this year to find a great location, which we did. We found um, this really, really incredible space um, uh, outside of Montreal uh, called Oka Abbey, and it's where we're setting the second season. It's going to be set uh, on an island off of the Pacific Northwest, and it's going to be cool and different and yet the same. <laughs> Perfect. All right, well, they put you through quite the ringer as a character, as an actress uh, last year. How are, how are you coping with what they're doing to you this year? Things haven't really changed. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's always a new adventure uh, for my character right now. It's, it's pretty uh, intense and uh, exciting, and um, I'm definitely getting put through a different ringer, I guess. Yeah, we torment our poor actors. Yeah, I know. What did she do to deserve that? Uh, they yeah. just be on the show. That's it. <laughs> All right, let me uh, let me open up to the room. One of the really compelling aspects of the first season was sort of this uh, claustrophobic effect of, of being stuck, you know, at, at the station. Will we still be able to um, access that that kind of claustrophobia for the islands, or will they still feel uh, trapped? I guess. Yeah, I think it's a different claustrophobia. I mean, that's sort of how we feel anyway from, from the end of writing scripts. Um, that the island, because it's on an island and they're surrounded by water and it's not easy to hop off to another place, there's still that sense of being trapped. It's not as interior. Um, one of the really nice things about this season is we actually get to go outside, which we did some last season, but it was all green screen and, and snow and you know fake snow and, and that sort of thing. But this year we actually get to go and run around in the woods, which are deep and dark and scary as well. So. Yes, we're hoping that we can maintain that sense of claustrophobia and not being able to go anywhere. And so last year you had this music that didn't really match up with what was going on screen. Can we expect more of that this season as well? Yeah, yeah. that and more, yeah, absolutely. It's one of my favorite parts of the show. <laughs> Hi. Um, now that you've sort of, I want to say sort of cured the virus and we find out what it is, how has it been different that you just don't be focusing on like worrying about the people getting infected and all that? Uh, well, it is, to a degree. Um, what we're trying to do is, um, without completely ditching the Narvik uh, story from last year, which was our virus from, from first season, we've come up with something new and even potentially more dangerous. And so Narvik won't go away completely, but it kind of takes a back seat for a while, and then we'll rear its ugly head again. But part of what we wanted to do was, in our, in our minds anyway, as we were breaking second season, it was, okay, new location, Let's come up with a new disease. Let's have a new threat so that each of the seasons can stand alone a little bit. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hi, my question is actually for Kira. Um, what can we expect from Dr. Walker's character arc this season? What kind of things is she going to be dealing with? <laughs> um, well, I can't uh, speak for where it's going to go, but so far, some of the things that are happening you know, last season there was a, a lot that was taken from her and who she was at the beginning of the season. She became a completely a 
different person you know, physically at the end of the season. So there's a lot of things that have made her evolve. And when we came into season two, I feel like every time I get a new script, I'm kind of in a different adventure and journey within the story. So it's been it's been pretty intense and interesting. And even um, episodes three and four in particular, I'm really excited about because some of the stuff that they did with my character and where she goes, and again, part of that um, psychological thriller aspect of the show, this really starts to hit home here for me. Um, but the things that I was going through in shooting those episodes in particular were some of the most creative, bizarre, dark, intense, just crazy things that I've ever gotten to do on camera in the first place. And so it was really exciting and I just really appreciate they keep putting me, it's not just about getting put through the ringer, but it's it's about getting a script and thinking, wow, I have to rise to the occasion for this one. This is, it doesn't feel like TV for me. Sometimes I'm feeling like I'm in this isolated indie film about some weird new thing that's happening. So um, yeah, her character is definitely, she, she it, you know, she's become something else. and. The whole thing with immortality, I think what's interesting is it's this new way of having to start over. You get that chance to try to right a wrong, but then that's where the whole thank God pay the price starts to step in. So yeah, she's she's definitely evolved into something. And one of the things I can tell you also about Kira's character, uh, Dr. Walker in particular, is we're gonna be playing a time this year um, because one of the cool things about immortality is you live forever. And so without getting into you know, the great thing about having a show about with immortal characters in it is that they look the same. And so we're going to be having a lot of fun with um, structure and with, with time and with storytelling. We'll be bouncing around a little bit. Hi, this is Kenny Gold from Media Boulevard. Um, I was wondering, can you talk about how much time has passed since season one, when season two opens? Is this like a year later? It's about, it's about 15 months. Okay. And I just one follow up real quick. With the CBC and the news, It's bizarre. Yeah, I think it's really, it's really strange and, and scary. Uh, and it's nice to know that we were, you know, thinking this ahead of that. Um, but actually, it's, it's affecting us in a small way as well because our um, our technical advisor, a guy who's been reading our scripts all last season and this season to, to make sure that we're staying true and honest, is actually working on one of the Ebola teams, and so he's been very busy. And uh, we, uh, it takes him a little while to get a script back. We don't want. Um, you know, with the, you know, one of the things about television is that you usually get to uh, put all of your uh, your biggest costs at the beginning, which is building the sets and having those. So changing location, like I don't know if it's going to be like a seasonal thing now. We're going to kind of change locations. Does that does that kind of add a little bit to it in terms of uh, you know, how do you keep it from getting overly expensive? So you're not starting out each season like with this big, you know, let's build new sets or let's build new locations, that kind of thing. I mean, how do you kind of control that aspect? Oh, you're absolutely right. That's a that's a huge issue for us and we don't have, I mean, if, if you think about it, most shows, you're able to amortize, you know, over multiple seasons, you hope, the cost of the set, the cost of wardrobe, and we're kind of saying, for the most part, burn it all and start over again. So yes, it is a, it is something we, we very much uh, uh, consider as we, as we move forward, but we do want to do different locations and, and, and change it up. So it is an expense that we bear um, uh, and it, it eats up a lot of our, uh, of our budget for the show, but also, Part of what we were trying to do is find a great location and some, something that was already there for us that we could go, ooh, the story fit, fit really nicely here. And that's what we did. We found this location that when you see it, I think it's going to be amazing. James Hamilton from Geek Astronomy. I'm just curious, speaking of locations, are there going to be any flashbacks to the base or will we never see the base again? Because that was a beautiful yeah, that definitely was. Um, I can tell you that we will see snippets of the base, um, but really uh, only in, in kind of reminding people. Um, that being said, we're doing some different things this year with flashing back and flashing forward that um, will take you all sorts of different places. So that's one of the things I think is, that's fun about the show is that we have the opportunity to do that kind of storytelling. Thank you. And uh, talking about just the beautiful set from last year, something that's fun, uh, somebody mentioned the music before. I've always thought of the music was almost another character when you started watching the show. 
And the environment, I think, is always another character with our show because of that idea of claustrophobia, whether you're stuck in the Arctic or now you're stuck on an island, but also, or stuck in your mind or whatever's right. going on. But um, what's interesting about this season is last year it had these very cool colors and cold tones, and this year, what's fun about what we do with our show is that it's now evolved into something else because of the, this idea of going to different locations each season. It's really warm and, and different, and uh, it's kind of great. It's like a whole new animal. Yeah, it is. It's about bringing the same characters and our mythology over, and we're having fun with toying with things we did last year and changing them up just a little bit. For example, the um, one of the things we're talking about doing is changing the main title sequence, which is a, a short little thing, but has this great little bossa nova piece that um, our composer, Ryan Mulvile, uh, put together. And we're going to use the same bossa nova, but we're talking right now about what that's going to look like. And it's something that I hope we can do every season, uh, is change it up and kind of reflect the theme of what we're doing in the show. start to get into it in this season, you're going to have to uh, get that answered about what happened, because it's only 15 months later, and um, you know, but when we when we ended that uh, last episode, I was kind of a part of that. So I think she's a survivor, and uh, she's going to do what it takes to uh, to keep going. That was the, one of the parts about the character that I loved the most that I discovered last year, is that she... Um, She's, she's not without fear, but she's really brave. So she just keeps putting herself into it to figure out a way out. She just doesn't give up. And um, she's got a lot of flaws, but that's one thing about her that I think keeps her going. So I think um, whatever she believes is the right or wrong thing to do, she's gonna do what she can to maneuver her way through. And, um, and so it's an interesting thing this season to figure out which side she's on and which side she's being genuine with or not. Yeah, and one of the things that we really wanted to do, one of the reasons we did such a time jump between first and second season, is we wanted to start characters off in a, in a really different place. And then you can watch and go, wait, how did that happen? How did this person, just like we did with that jump to the Pilar headquarters at the end of last season. And we wanted to do that with a number of characters. And so when you see them for the first time, they're gonna either be in a different situation or they're gonna look really different and we're bringing back a whole bunch of people, but really hoping to do it in a surprising way so that you go, whoa, what, how did that happen? And then explain it and, and backfill it in a way that, uh, that it feels cool and fun to watch. Are we introduced to new main characters? And can you tell us anything about the ones that we may meet? Yes, absolutely. Um, there's a new uh, character, a new CDC character, um, a doctor by the name of Dr. Kyle Summer. Uh, and he is a really interesting addition to the team, um, uh, played by Matt Long, and uh, he's, he's Southern, he's um, got a little more humor, um, not quite as, as, as wacky as Doreen, but he's uh, definitely uh, uh, got a, 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 a edge to him. Um, so he's going to be- nice charm. Yeah, he does. Lightness and, and fun energy. Yeah. Uh, and then we're also going to meet um, some new characters that are just specific season, at least going you know, so far going forward. Um, one is going to be uh, a guy by the name of Michael, who is uh, played by Steven Weber, who uh, is, is amazing. And uh, he, he is going to be part of this um, location that we go to, this island. Uh, our folks are going to find him there. And what he's doing there is, uh, is going to be pretty amazing. Cool. Thank but you. yeah, he's been great. I think there's time for one more. <laughs> uh, Jason Griffin, uh, TVholic.com. You mentioned uh, changing it up from season to season. How many, like, what type of I how many ideas do you have for, like, how far out have you sort of thought about things like that? A hundred. 
A couple, uh, definitely. And um, I mean, that's one of the, the difficult and fun things about television is you just don't know how many seasons you have. Um, and so, yes, we have some ideas, you know, moving forward if we're so fortunate uh, to be able to do so. But um, yeah, we have, we have all sorts of ideas and we just hope that we get the opportunity to play with them. Thank you guys. This is great. Thank you. Thank all you guys for